My research team from the Davies Livestock Research Centre, based here at the Roseworthy campus of the University of Adelaide, has been researching an alternative to shearing of sheep for about 20 years. We recently made a breakthrough, which will now allow us to develop a new way of harvesting wool. This research has become vital as a shortage of shearers is threatening the very survival of one of Australia's iconic industries. The shortage of shearers became most apparent during the pandemic when New Zealand shearers could not enter Australia, exacerbating a long-term decline in people entering the profession. Producers are increasingly frustrated at the difficulty and unreliability of getting shearers when needed. The cost of shearing has escalated and delays to shearing can affect animal welfare and wool quality. Many attempts have been made for well over 50 years to develop alternatives to shearing, including biological or chemical defleecing and robots. But to date, only one process has been commercially released. This was Bioclip, which many of you would have heard about. Bioclip resulted from CSIRO research dating back to the 1970s. It works by stopping cells dividing in the wool follicle. And in the same way as chemotherapy causes hair to fall out in cancer patients, the wool falls out after bioclip treatment. This was, of course, the objective of the treatment, but meant that nets had to be applied to catch the severed wool. Applying the bioclip agent, putting nets on, removing nets, and then separating the wool from the nets was all labour intensive, and bioclip was withdrawn from the market. We took a different approach to the problem. We thought that if we could create a weakened zone of wool by injecting a biological agent, we could then return the sheep to a close paddock or confined area near the shed for any period of time from say two to four weeks, during which time a protective coat would regrow under the weakened zone. Then we could apply a mechanical force to the wool above the zone to harvest the wool using a device which applies a plucking or peeling action and then removing the plucked wool with a vacuum system to a sorting table. One of the team, Dr Sarah Weaver, has been working with me on the idea for about 15 years. Sarah is a wool producer's daughter with a very strong research science background, as well as a practical understanding of the on-farm difficulties of making science work in the field. Our early attempts to achieve the weakened zone was with an unusual protein called zane, which is found in corn. When we supplied the sheep with the amino acids found in zane, we were amazed to find that after a very short period of time, the wool became very weak. Here Sarah shows how weak the wool becomes after our treatment. This wool is below 10 newtons per kilotex, which is very weak. Of course, the first question we are asked is, but won't the wool just fall out in the paddock after treatment, just like by a clip? The answer to that is no. We did a large animal trial where we treated sheep and then placed them out in the paddock for up to 10 weeks and found there was no difference in wool loss between those that had been treated and those that hadn't. We know why this is the case. While the force to break a small staple of wool is very low, the forces applying in the field like rubbing up against fence posts and wire, saltbush and bluebush and other sheep attack much larger quantities of wool. This means while the force to break a small staple is very low, when you attack a large number of staples, say 100 at one time, the total force is now high. Once we'd established that it was possible to create a weak zone in the fleece and that it didn't come off in the paddock, we needed to develop a prototype device that would easily peel the wool off the sheep. Australian Wool Innovation engaged engineers who quickly developed a simple handheld device which peels weak wool off rapidly. Remember, this wool is not being cut. It's being broken. So there are no blades and cutters, no shearing cuts, no injuries to shearers and the sheep, and no skin pieces in the wool. Note the perfectly even pile of wool left after regrowth for three weeks. This is important because it means the harvested wool 
is more even than can ever be achieved with normal shearing. It's interesting also that the hairs on the legs and the face are not harvested. This means these hairs won't appear in the final product. A handheld device like the one the engineers made would be useful because together with sheep catching and handling devices means unskilled labour could harvest the wool because there's no need to keep the combs and cutters close to the skin. So no need for the skilled manipulations shearers use. This in itself will allow producers to harvest when they want and would allow small groups of sheep to be harvested at the best time and not when shearers are available. We ultimately envisage a much more sophisticated device which would enable high throughput and automated harvesting. So this all sounds good, but what still needs to be done and how long will it take? As wool researchers working with producers for three decades, we're well aware of the history of alternatives to shearing, which have had limited success. We're very conscious of not raising hopes too high too early, but we've made good progress on the injectable agent. More work is needed to identify the best agent and refine its delivery. We then need to make sure it's effective in all sheep types, ages, sex, reproduction and health. We've already started talking to pharmaceutical companies and the APVMA to make sure we meet all the regulatory requirements so when we refine the product, we can get it to market as quickly as possible. Finally, a large amount of work is needed by the engineers to make the removal devices. So how will the injection be administered, Phil? So we're hoping to do a subcutaneous injection, much like farmers do with vaccines now, just under the ear, pinch of skin, and pop the, uh, the agent under the, under the skin. Simple, run down the race, do a whole lot, put them out in the paddock and, uh, and bring them back in when you're ready to harvest. Can I do it in a conventional shearing shed or an existing machinery shed? Yeah, so this, this could be done anywhere, um, provided you've got sheep handling facilities, um, you know, a handling a cradle, um, you could do it anywhere. But we're, we're aiming in the first instance to be able to just to plug it into the existing gear. When can I expect to see this operational? Yeah, so we understand the urgency of this project. Um, we're on a pretty fast time track. Um, but we do have to do everything scientifically and properly. We have to make sure that we don't you cut any corners. Certainly on the chemical side of things, um, we're giving ourselves 18 months to prove that, that the, the ones that we think will work will work and be safe in all classes of sheep, be safe to the animal, health of the animal, reproduction, safe to the operator and cheap. And withholding periods of wool or meat? <laughs> That's a good that's a really timely question because we've just done the experiment in the last two days to determine how long it will stay in the system. We think it'll be quite short, so the withholding times will be, be quite short. Will it affect wool quality? That's one of the things that excites me most about this technology. Um, uh, what we've found is that um, when we do this, um, make this weak point, the fibre ends become four microns finer. And of course, if you do that in two years, in, in succession, both ends are fine. And that's got to be good for wool um, uh, feel and tactile responses in apparel wool. But the other thing is you've got no um, skin pieces, no shearing cuts, um, no second cuts, so the fibres are even. You know, every fibre that was growing the day that we injected um, uh, is affected. And so it all comes off at exactly, so it leaves an absolutely perfect pile of wool at the end of the process. And, and will it work for crossbreds as well as merinos? Yeah, we're about to do that experiment. Um, we, we hope that it works in crossbreds, but it might depend on how much merino you've got in the cross. Because we know it works on merinos, it's just how, how much further can you dilute out the merino and still have it work. We should know an answer to that pretty soon. And the most important one, how much will it cost? Yeah, that's the question everyone asks first up. Well, you know, what's it going to cost? Um, we're hoping to make it cheaper than the current shearing rates, obviously, and they're obviously going up a lot at the moment. Um, but it'll depend on the cost of the chemical, how much we can make it for, um, how much the machine that harvests it will cost, and so on. But 
you know, definitely aiming for it to be as cheap or cheaper than the current system. So we've seen the science, what's AWI's take on it? AWI's been investing in this research for a long time now, so it's really, it's great news that the science has got to a point that we can get some really good outcomes from it. And not only is it likely to alleviate that pressure for, for uh, access to sharers, but it's got positive outcomes in terms of animal welfare, in terms of occupational health and safety, and also the potential there to improve more quality. So our board has thrown their full support behind this project. If you'd like to know more about this groundbreaking alternative to shearing, get in touch. We'd love to hear from you.